it was horrendous, and it's it's very difficult, I think, to get a sense of just how dark and 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 awful it was. Before the election of late 87, early 88, Lord Halsbury had attempted to bring in an act which was not unsimilar to what became Section 28. And he comes up with this amazing statement. I did not think that lesbians were a problem. They do not molest little girls. They do not indulge in disgusting and unnatural practices like buggery. They are not wildly promiscuous and do not spread venereal disease. It is part of the softening up propaganda that lesbians and gays are nearly always referred to in that order. The relatively harmless lesbian leads on to the vicious gay. That was what I thought, and I still in part continue to think. But I have been warned that the loony left is hardening up the lesbian camp and they are becoming increasingly aggressive. Now, of course, the irony is that it was us lesbians who were hardening up the loony left, not the other way around. And I think it's a beautiful example of the patriarchy that was thinking, you know, well, women can't you know, do that sort of stuff. And I think one of the difficulties for people who haven't lived through 28 and haven't got a concept of what it was like to have no mobile phones, no internet, no 24 hour news, all, all you got news-wise was through the papers and through television which was absolutely viciously against us. So you were seeing horrendous things like, you know, these people should be gassed. Um, a vicar has told me I should shoot my, my gay son. I mean, appalling stuff. The day that the Lords debated it and passed it, there was the famous abseiling lesbians, which was just wonderful. Um, they had decided that, that if the, the law was passed, they would abseil down. And what they did on that morning was to buy some washing line and wrapped it round their waist, found a way into the laws, found, eventually found a lord who would say, all right, I'll let you in. The law was passed, I was furious, I stomped out, desperate for a, for a cigarette and, and a pee, got five steps, heard this incredible noise, went back in to see that the women I'd been looking at the other side had disappeared and looked down and there was this rope, so I missed the magic moment. But it was an amazing moment and it really hit the press, you know, leaping lesbians in the Lord's alliteration and it pushed the whole thing and I think it would force the press to actually maybe think a bit again, but it wonderful publicity. And then of course, a couple of days later, another bunch of lesbians go, and some of them the same, then invade the BBC news and, and get into the six o'clock news. Beautiful, I mean, just done with such panache, done with such vigour, done with such humour. So there were some glorious pieces of, of campaigning and challenge. So after this horrific election, which was very racist and very homophobic, we then move into 28 taking over. And you might remember a really famous speech that Margaret Thatcher came up with. They think they have the inalienable right to be gay. Outrageous stuff. Now the irony is that Section 28 never went to court in, in England and Wales. Um, there was never a court case, but the self-censorship was powerful. So teachers who may have wanted to do something didn't feel confident enough to do it. Teachers who didn't want anything to do with it used it as an excuse. And for those of us who were out and proud and trying to work with the issues, um, I found it quite difficult. The shadow of Section 28 is very long. Uh, it, it, it is extraordinary to think that it, it, it has been dead for, for 15 years. You, you can go into schools now and there will be teachers who are still afraid to, to talk about lesbian and gay issues. Their assumption that it's not appropriate, that it's not acceptable, that it's not legal is still there.